Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Monday. I am super excited for our guest today. It's a good friend of mine, someone I'm working with, amazing, amazing person, amazing personality. So today we are going to talk about holistic health and empowerment. So let me go ahead and welcome our wonderful guest, Sharice Williams, and we will get started. Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm just super excited and I want to thank you in advance just for taking my invitation, for accepting the invitation and joining mm -hmm. us. I'm really excited because just whatever I have learned from you just in the past couple of weeks has been incredible in my life. So I wanted to share that value in my community here and that's why I was eager to invite you and made sure that you said yes. And so thank you so much. So just give us a quick intro and we'll just get started. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. I, I just, I feel very blessed to be able to come on and share with your, um, with your community. And so uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sharice Williams. I'm a former ICU nurse. Um, I am a holistic health and empowerment coach. And what I do is I teach busy, high achieving women how to heal their bodies with the foods that they eat, the thoughts that they think and the words that they speak so that they can release excess weight and prevent or reverse disease. So I'm happy to share with you all today. I'm happy to be in your space, Sarah, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. I'm so so I'm going to ask you, <laughs> yo, yep, Cherise and her green juice. Either her green right. juice or her <laughs> antioxidant water is inseparable with her. So uh, you can see it in practice right there. She is actually doing what she's, you know, preaching. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the questions that I have for you. So number one is that why did you transition from traditional medicine or Western medicine to a more holistic and natural approach in, when it comes to health? Yeah, many reasons, but the main reason was that I realized that we were kind of going backwards. And, and let me kind of take you back and I'll explain that a little bit better. So when I became a nurse and um, I started working in ICU, and the majority of my patients uh, were 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even some very few 100 year olds. And yeah, we kind of expect, you know, once you get 80, 90, you know, we kind of expect you to get get frail or whatever. Right. Although that's not necessarily the case, but that's kind of what our expectation um, has come to be. And through the years, when I, as I was practicing, I was practicing 12 years as an ICU nurse. And what I realized is that our, my patient population started to get younger and younger. So mm -hmm. it was rare that I saw a 30-year-old or 40-year-old in the ICU at the wow. beginning. But what, what happened over the, the course of those 12 years, there were lots of 40-year-olds. There were some 30-year-olds, lots of 40s, lots of 50s, lots of 60s. And I thought we are doing something wrong. Like yeah. we should not be getting sicker younger. And it got to a point where, you know, all I felt like I was doing was giving medication. And one of the things that I've always loved about, um, about taking care of people is really empowering them and teaching them how to take care of themselves. themselves. And it got to a point where all I was doing was teaching them how and when and where to take their medicine. And I thought, mm -hmm. I don't, I just didn't, it just did not resonate with me any longer. You know, Oprah always says, you know, when you know better, you do better. And so it just got to a point where it just didn't resonate. Initially it did. And, mm -hmm. um, but after a while, because I saw that people were getting sicker, I saw that people were getting younger. I thought we, something's, something's not right. And so I transitioned mm -hmm. out of nursing and entered the world of entrepreneurship and uh, fast forward, fast forward became literally so I'll, I'll just share with you it, it started out very me focused because I was working so I started two businesses after I transitioned out of nursing started two businesses very successful businesses and I'm the type of person that when I am in I am all in 
And with that, and I know a lot of your uh, community can probably relate to this. You could probably relate to this as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. We're in, we're in. We're and in. It was 60, it, yeah, it's everything, right? So it's 60, 70 hours, you know, a week. And, and sometimes I was working, you know, I may have been working 12, 16, 18 hours a day. And what happened, which is common for us as women, is we give to everybody else, right? So I was, mm-hmm. I was pouring into my businesses. I was trying to balance all that, which I probably didn't do a very good job at the time, uh, balancing being a mom and a wife and all the responsibility that comes with that. And I found myself, literally, I had migraines all the time. Now, I once, I did have migraines. I started having migraines right around, I don't know, 14 or 16 years old, but they were very mm-hmm. infrequent. And what happened is over the course of those years, particularly as I was building my businesses, I I, I would have, it, it would not be anything for me to have two migraines a week. Oh, a week. my God. Debilitating migraines to the point where I had to turn off the lights, you know, anything, the light would hurt my eyes, the, anything that smelled like anything would, it would um, intensify it. And I was down for the count. And I would just mm-hmm. take medicine because I still, at that point in time, I did not know of an alternative. And I, like many, many of us, we probably have taken different medications. I, I didn't like the way I felt taking migraine medicine. So for any of those, uh, anyone that's watching this who's taken migraine medicine, it gets rid of the migraines. But for me, I always felt like I had like a, a hangover the next day. I just felt mm-hmm. off for about the next 24 to 48 hours. And I, I just didn't like the way that mm-hmm. felt. But I didn't know what else to do. And so I would go back to the doctor. I would ask for a different medication. They'd give me another medication. Same thing. It would work for the migraine, but but I felt awful. Um, I just felt off afterwards. And so it got to a point where I said, you know what? I'm not going to take the medication anymore. I'm just going to take some ibuprofen. Well, my headaches were like really, really bad. So I had to take sometimes 800 or more. A lot. A lot. And every time I would take like a handful of ibuprofen, all I could think of was, girl, you are killing your liver. You are killing your stuff because they're so harsh. But I didn't know of anything else until finally I said, you know what, let me start looking. So let, let me let me start researching. That is my background as a nurse. I am a science junkie. I'm a research junkie, really. And so I started looking at alternative ways through foods, through medicinal herbs, through therapeutic essential oils, through meditation, through yoga, through mindfulness. And uh, and, and what happened was I started practicing. Well, let me t- take you back a little bit because although I was, I was having the migraines, I literally was experiencing chronic fatigue because when you are in a stress, you know, Mm -hmm. stress response for a long period of time, what happens is you kind of blow out your adrenals. Um, Those are little, they're little glands that sit kind of on either side. Um, And I was, I had chronic fatigue, but I just kept pushing through. How many times? How many times do we just keep, we just keep going? Keep going. Keep going. You know, and our body's always, always communicating with us, but oftentimes we're not listening. I wasn't listening. I was getting these migraines more frequently because my body was trying to tell me, girl, you're doing too much. You need to slow down. Slow down. You need to slow down. You need to get some more sleep. <laughs> get some yeah. more sleep. Get some more water. Get some better, higher quality food in your body. And the the really the straw that broke the camel's back. I, I was having the migraines. I was you know chronic fatigue, but just kept pushing through. Anytime mm-hmm. I could sit down, I would take a nap, like literally. Oh <laughs> um, but the straw that broke the camel's back is, um, I started having knee pain, and I was in my thirties. I was about oh 30. God. Yeah, I know. And I was out to dinner one night and I stepped off of the curb. I was like going to the parking lot, stepped off the curb and fell. And I was like, total fluke accident, you know. Oh total. my goodness. But it happened two more times. I fell three times and I thought, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I cannot see the signs on the wall, like literally my body was breaking down and I was in my 30s. So that's when I started to research and look at, look at all the other measures that I just um, mentioned. Yeah. And I started with food. I started with food. Mm-hmm. And then slowly, but sure, and that actually wasn't that slow, um, but my migraines went away. My my knee pain went away. I started to release weight. Um, my energy started going through the roof. I mean, it was all just a beautiful um, a domino effect. And I right. thought, yeah. oh, oh, my gosh. 
I need to tell people about this. People oh like, my God. No. I was like, I'm a nurse. I'm educated in this, you know, in this arena. And I didn't know. So I know mm -hmm. other people don't know. And so it just, at that point, it became my passion. My passion to share with people that you can heal your body. You're not destined to lifelong a lifelong um, medication. You're not mm -hmm. destined to whatever the diagnosis is that they gave you. You have the power to heal your body. And in fact, our bodies are always always trying to get to a place of balance or homeostasis, always. It's designed to heal itself. Prime example, you know, if you get a paper cut, you don't have to do anything for it to heal. It knows to heal itself. And yeah. it's no different with anything else in our bodies. We just have to give it the proper building blocks so that it can heal itself. So that has been my mission to just spread that message with the world and, um, and it's 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 my passion. I love it. <laughs> that is so awesome. I I hope you. That was a long that. answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's good because we needed that back history because you don't just you didn't just wake up one day and decided to quit your nursing and do this because number one you have your personal experience. You know, not just being sick, but seeing other people being sick and coming to the hospital. And sadly, we are made to believe that medication is the only solution. And once we're diagnosed with something, we're stuck with it until we take this medicine. And sometimes the medicine does not even heal. It only suppresses the issue. And so, <clears throat> yeah. so, I mean, this is like an education that really, really needs to happen and it continues to happen and maybe in a faster pace because with the pharmaceutical companies gaining so much power, and, and all they want to do is put out these medications. And unfortunately, that one medicine that you're taking to cure or even suppress the symptoms is causing you four other issues. The side yeah. effects are worse. When, when I hear these TV commercials, I'm like, why would somebody take this medicine? I'd rather be sick with that one disease and not worry about that other 10 you know, side effects that they're talking about. It's, a, it's right. crazy. It is crazy. And it's so funny you mentioned that because I remember my youngest son, he was about probably 10 and he was in my bedroom and the TV was on and a commercial for Chantix came on and it helps you stop smoking. And, uh, the, you know, the commercial mm -hmm. I know that at the one. very end is like, uh, please seek medical attention or this medication may cause nausea, vomit, da, 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 da. stroke, heart attack. <laughs> and my son looks at the TV. He's like, why would anyone take that? Exactly. And I'm like, it makes so much sense to kids, right? He was 10. And but but we because we're not educated, because we have been taught that the answer isn't a bottle, the answer is medication. We don't we don't even use our senses. And I guess maybe I think because maybe we get into so much pain, we just want to relieve the pain. That that is, and, and the knowledge is not there either. People don't yeah. know there's an alternative solution. Yeah. I mean, and, and just to add to this, so I have autoimmune and I was put on medication. The side effect was making me sick. But yeah. to me, I had a little bit of knowledge of natural remedies and things like that. I told my doctor, I'm not going to take that. But, you know, you. There's a side effect. I'll deal with the symptoms of the autoimmune that I have. And, but I'll figure it out. And I know I can find a solution through, you know, with the eating better and through other medicine. And I started to look into it lightly at the beginning because I was really busy with work. But as I got myself more and more educated, I became serious about it. And that's why it was a no brainer working with you when we spoke because that was exactly what I was looking for. I just needed someone to guide me on what I need to take I know it had to it had to be through you know the way I eat and the way I took care of my body rather than medicine. So I refuse to take that medicine, and it's been years that I haven't taken it. So, and to see a difference already, and we've been working for two weeks, and to see a difference already for me, it's like I need to get Sharice in my group. I want more people to hear about it. So uh, it's really fantastic. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, when I got your text and you said you feel you said you have so much you said uh, you have more energy. Yeah, and I was like I was smiling from ear to ear. I'm like yes, 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 yes. So yeah, I used to have a lot of pain when I wake up, and I used to not be able to do anything. Out, my body would ache, so I would have my breakfast and coffee and just be sitting on the sofa, just listen to either the news or something. 
and for a couple of hours before I can start moving. Now I get up, I eat, I have my morning prayers and morning classes, and after that I'm out walking. I love I'm it. Eating. I love and, it. And, and my sister-in-law called me last week, and the minute I said hello, she was like, "What's up with all this energy?" That's the first <laughs> thing she said, it. and she's listening right now, so she can comment. I'm like, "Look, the last few days." I have energy. I've been feeling good, so don't jinx it. So it's it's and been it will, continue. it will continue. This is like it's not something that's just uh, short lived. Um, even my husband the other day, he said um, it was raining. It was raining. Well, it's been raining a lot lately. And um, I said, you look tired. His eyes looked a little like red. I said, oh, it's in the morning too. He had just gotten up. And I said, you look tired. I said, are you sleep? Did you sleep well? Are, are you sleeping? And he said, no, I feel okay. I said, well, you. I said, you look really tired. I said, you might just take a nap. And he said, um, he said, well, yeah. Um, I said, I would say that I was going to take a nap, but I'm not. He was like, no, the old you would have taken a nap. He was like, but you're not going to take a nap. And I thought it was so funny because he never made a comment before about my level of energy. But mm -hmm. it was interesting in that moment. He was like, no, though. He's like, the old Charisse would have taken a nap. Mm -hmm. like, That's not me anymore. <laughs> don't need it anymore. Yeah. My and I just want to clarify just for a, just a quick second because I don't want. I don't want to, to get misinterpreted. I do believe there's a place and time for medicine. Yes. If, it, if it is something acute, if, if my you know, if, 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 if my arm is falling off, don't don't put a green smoothie on it. Like I need some pain medicine <laughs> and and take and get me to a you know to surgery. Um, or if it's again, if it's something very acute, like you know your blood pressure is through the roof. Yes, there are yeah, to, to bring down your blood pressure. But in that moment, yes, you need medicine that's going to work right then, right there. But for long term, no, 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 no. No, 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 no one, no one, in my opinion, no one should be living 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years on blood pressure medicine, on diabetic medication. All of those are reversible. Type 2, type two well, type 2 specifically, because that's the one thing that plagues us a lot, type 2 diabetes, heart mm -hmm. disease, but it's reversible. Those are lifestyle diseases. It's because of our lifestyle. And, and I've heard your client's testimony, the number of medication they were able to remove and you know be able to live without so i mean it is reversible it works there are so many people that have been living you know clean for years so it's not something it's not a quick fix that's going to go away it you know you got to just adjust your lifestyle and you can maintain that yeah. if you just follow through and my sister is saying i want that energy transfer to me <laughs> <laughs> i'll just throw it over there just there you go yep <laughs> Yep. It's amazing. It's amazing. It is. It is. It's, it's incredible. Incredible. Now, another thing is that you like to make a distinction between our health system and a sick mm -hmm. system. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of alluded to that a little bit just, you know, just a while ago, because the way our healthcare system is designed, it unfortunately, it's not designed to keep us to, to make us well. Um, there's really no money in, in, in a healthy person. There's a lot of money to be made by a sick person, medications and hospital visits and hospital stays and insurance costs. And I mean, so much, so much, so much. So that's why I say it's more of a sick care system <laughs> instead of a health care system, because, you know, it becomes a matter of, you know, just being prescribed Band-Aids, kind of like you said a, a little while ago, you take a medication that has all these side effects and then you take yeah. another medication to help with the side effects and then you have all these other side effects. Yeah. So then they add another one on and you're like, wait a minute. Wait, I only have one problem. <laughs> I had one problem. Now I have multiple problems multiple, because of the medications. Yeah. And and they just keep piling on, piling on, piling on instead of looking for the root cause. If you get to the root cause, you don't need any of that. Yeah. It's a process, yes. But would you rather spend, you know, 30 years on medication or maybe spend two, three years on really getting your body. And I say two or three years. It didn't even take that long for me, for my migraines, my chronic fatigue. I mean, it was probably a year, honestly, or less than a year. Um, I started to feel the difference immediately in my energy level. But in terms of, like right now, it's been it's been almost two years since I've had a migraine at all. Since I've had Not a headache. All. Since I've had a headache. Oh wow! Right, and that's that was that's coming from twice a week migraines to not even a headache in almost two years. It'll be two years in. It's, it's been it's a year and a half now. It's it'll be two years. No, no. Yeah, it'll be two years in September. 
That is, oh my God, that is, congratulations. It's really incredible. I mean, I, I, I suffer from migraine and I know how bad migraine headaches are. No, my no. friend who's also my neighbor, she has it so bad that they put her on cancer medication that Ooh. puts her to sleep for days. She would have to be in a dark room for days at a time. She lost her hair. It's crazy. And if you think about it, the average American is at least on three or five, nine medications mm -hmm. per day. Yeah, multiple times a day. Multiple I think, times. I think I, re I read somewhere, you're right, three to five medications yeah. every day, multiple times a day. It's, and, it's and I think it's like, a, like with your friend and with most of, most of us, we're just in so much pain, we want relief. It's like, just give me, we've tried different things yeah. and or we've tried different medications and we're like, just give me, give me what's going to stop the pain. Right. And again, not thinking to look for what is the root cause? Why is my body in pain? Why am I having this headache? Why am I having this pain? Why, you know, there is a reason our body is always communicating to us. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to listen. We're really good at not listening. It's like, oh, I got a headache. Let me just take some medicine because I have stuff to do. I got to keep going. I got to cook. Mm -hmm. I got to get, get pick up the kids. I got to, you know, continue to grow my business. So everything, right? Um, but that's that's the that's the your what your body's like. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. Letting us <laughs> Even yeah. if the medication suppresses the pain, your energy level is just not the same. Right. And you here's the thing. Right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can be, you know, at an optimal, you know, energy level rather than mundane because you took medicine. It, it's just, you're not performing. You it know, takes the life out of you. It, it, it prevents you from being your true self and from the essence of you from being displayed because like you said you might be out of pain but you're sluggish you're tired you're drained I and mean, you know you just and that's no way to exist I mean, no, no. you're not even yourself not at all and what mm -hmm. happens is it's like a vicious cycle right when you don't have the energy and you can't get things done it piles up on you adds the stress the stress causes more tension and more you know issues so it's like a vicious cycle it really you don't is. really break it you're going to continue to live in it and then you end up you know you end up with more issues more sickness and disease it's when your body cannot fight, you know, and it's actually sometimes fighting itself. Like for me, my issue is like my body's fighting itself with the autoimmune yeah. that I have. So I had to do anything and everything, you know, possible to take control of that. Yeah. Um, and if you want to live healthier, if you want to have that energy to be with your family, be able to do the things you have to do still, mm -hmm. but, and then still be a happy person. Like at the end of the day, you're not completely drained out that you don't even want to have a conversation with your family. You don't want to be that person. Right. Or like me, I was falling asleep on my kids. Like I was reading them stories and yeah. I would just fall asleep. We laugh about it now. It. But I felt for so many years, I felt so, so, so bad. I was tired, but it was it was everything all in one. And we used to joke around, like, because my son, my older son, he used to say, Mom, you used to read the books, but you would be making up words, and then you just fall asleep. And I'm like, oh, my God. I felt so bad. I felt like, you know, it is what it is. Now we can laugh about it. But I felt, I, I did feel really, really bad. I mean, it happens. You can't help it. Yeah. You can't help it. So, but I'm glad, you know, for the discovery that you have made, you know, for the test that you have done and you have that, the proof and all that stuff. So now I know you're an advocate of like vegan diet or, you know, um, I guess none dairy, none meat type uh, of diet. A plant, yeah, plant-based. Plant -based. Let me mm -hmm, put it down. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. So, you know, our audience can understand exactly what we're talking about. Sure. Yeah. And, and it is so funny because, you know, a lot of times the minute you say plant based, people are like, hey, no, 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 <laughs> like, get away. I said I, that. I know. <laughs> I know. And but here's the it, it, it goes back. It goes back to understanding how food affects our body. So. Yeah. And it goes back to understanding um, or realizing that we've just we've never been properly educated on it so for, or we've been or we've been lied to let's just say that because think about mm -hmm. this, think about when you were growing up and even i think they're still on commercials are still on about the milk you know milk does the body good and you have the professional athletes venus and serena williams and and you know they have the milk mustache milk and they're exactly. like more milk and here's the thing 
it's over 80% of the general population can't even process and digest milk. milk yeah. It is a farce. We've been lied to. Milk produces so much mucus in our body, so much inflammation in our body. And, that, and then we wonder why we have all these crazy things going on. So milk, so that's milk and cheese, anything that comes from a cow, really, it is very inflammatory in our body. And then you look at meats and, you know, we've been, we've been raised to think, mm. you know, you have a big piece of meat and you have little side items. They're even called side items. Side and items. In actuality, that should be the majority of mm. our plates. And if you're going to eat meat, it should be, meat should be the side, a little side. And, you know, there's been tons and tons of studies. And there's a really great study called the China study. And there's another study called, um, the blue zone. I think it's called the blue zone. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, both of them research ancient uh, civilizations and even current civilizations that are not as well. They looked at their 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 lifestyle and their dietary habits. And the major and the majority of not all, actually not the majority, all of them. Um, what they found is they live a primarily plant based lifestyle the meat might be a little portion if at all if at all you said but it's it's not the the majority on the plate it's definitely the minority on the plate because again meat as is dairy is very very inflammatory so you've got all this inflammation plus you've got all the stress but let's just face it we live in the united states we live in a very stressful society. I know everybody wants yep. to come to the United States. I don't think they know what they're. <laughs> what no, they, they don't. don't. <laughs> they don't. I talk to my, you know, my friends like that are from other places, like you know, just different areas in Africa and, and just just different places. They're like, yeah, we have a driver and we have a maid and we have mm -hmm. a cook. And I'm like, what? Like what? <laughs> we don't have that. We had to do get more. Huh? We had three of them growing up. We you had see? a maid, we had a cleaning person, we had someone who just took care of the yard. I mean, they are living life there. They just don't know how right. much it is. <laughs> and see, we have all those responsibilities plus work or business. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's 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 like we have it's nonstop, 24 hours. We're working. Then we're cleaning and cooking and taking care of kids and washing and cutting y'all. You know, y'all. It never ends, and so that is stress on our bodies as well. So we're living in this stress, stressful state, right? Yeah. We're eating food, which and then stress in and of itself causes inflammation. It automatically causes blood pressure to go up. It automatically causes your 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 uh, blood vessels to to tighten to 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 collapse or or to. Uh, constrict is the word. Constrict. And so you add all that with foods that are inflammatory. That's just a recipe. Yeah, processed food. Processed food. Sugars. There's so there's sugars in just about every and everything. Ketchup. There's sugars in everything. And talk about a major, majorly um uh inflammatory food, sugar, white. Processed sugar, like I said, it's pretty much in everything. It is highly addictive, number one. That's why you eat it and you want more. You want yep. more and you want more and you want more. And even if you try to not eat it, eventually, you know, it's, it's an addiction. It legitimately, they've done studies um, with uh, rats and they were giving them, They, of course, they had two, you know, two test uh, subjects. Um, well, multiple rats. But anyway, they gave um, one group uh, sugar and mm -hmm. the other group cocaine. Oh. They favored the sugar. Oh, and then they switched. They favored the sugar over the cocaine. Wow. They kept going back to the sugar. Talk about highly addictive. And again, it produces so much inflammation in your body. And so you've got processed foods that's full of tons of uh, tons of ingredients that you you can't even pronounce. Of course, your body doesn't know what to do with it because it's foreign. You've got the processed sugars. Highly inflammatory, highly addictive. I mean, you've got the dairy, milk, cheese, that type of thing. Again, highly inflammatory. Meat, highly inflammatory. No wonder why we're all sick. I was talking to, um, she's actually a client of mine now, and she was saying, oh, I don't really have anything, um, you know, just just allergies. I've had, you know, I've had allergies my whole life. Allergies are, it's, it's allergy has a, allergies have a direct correlation to gut health. When your really? gut health is, mm -hmm, when your gut health is out of whack. You start, you see allergies, not just seasonal, but other allergies as well. When you get your gut health intact, 
you see the allergies resolve. Oh, and, but it's things that we don't think of. Like, oh, I just always, oh, it's allergy season. Here's the deal. I've never had allergies a day in my life. My husband, allergies. We live in the same house. We go to the same places. He's sneezing and coughing and, you know, all his eyes, water and puffy. Me, nothing. Nothing. Interesting. Yeah, it's 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 gut health. And so if you're watching and you and you suffer with allergies, I was it could be other things, but usually the first place I I'll look at your gut health. Gut health. Mm. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I thought it was just related to what is on the air and you just can't do anything about it. It just reacts with your body. So it's good yeah. to know. Yeah, it, it's because you're in your yeah, I was gonna say it's because your um so your immune system is directly correlated with your gut. So if your gut health is off, your immune system is not going to be as um, strong as it needs to be to fight off the whatever's in the air or whatever's in the environment. But if your gut health is intact, it leads to a stronger immune system, and which means that your body can fight off whatever. Yeah. And one more thing I want to talk about sugar. Not only is it addictive and causes a lot of inflammation, I've also heard that cancer cells feed off of sugar. Yes, it does. Absolutely. This does not, yeah. If this does not say something, I don't know what else. I mean, it, it's 100%. Yeah. The China study talks about that a lot. Yeah. Um, but yes, 100%. Yes. I, want to, I won't reiterate what you said, but 100%. So part of your program, what other ailments or what type of diseases, ailments does it help with? Yeah, um, honestly, I have not seen it not help with anything. I've not seen it not help to resolve anything. I don't know if that made sense. Um, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, autoimmune, migraines, allergies. I'm at a loss. Depression. Dep again. So with depression, anxiety, those type of things, gut mm -hmm. health, gut health, the majority of our, um, like our happy hormones, our neurotransmitters that our body naturally produces, uh, serotonin, serotonin, for instance, is produced in our gut. If our gut is, if it's off, we're not going to be, we're not going to, we're not going to be our a normal, happy, uh, exuberant selves. The depression, the anxiety, it ties back to gut health. So pretty much everything and pretty much everything um and the skin issues too oh, a lot of oh my eczema gut health yeah psoriasis gut health yeah yep. there's so many things are, are uh 100 tied to gut health um yeah. so yeah and one thing i liked about you know working with you is that it's not just only me it really is you know a lifestyle change for my entire family yeah. because everyone in the family has one thing or another it may not be major you know health issue but there's something so this has allowed us to eat together and you know the family enjoys the meals it is a little extra work and and i'm not gonna make it sound like it's a breeze or you know it is a little extra worth but it is work but it is worth it yeah right? It's yeah. you're changing, you know, you're you're changing the way you eat that in return you have a much better health. You're improving your health, you're improving your entire family's health. Who are we working for? We're working 10, 12 hours a day for who? For our family, right? So if we don't take care of their health, what good is it gonna do to pile up on the money that they're not even gonna be able to enjoy? Even you yourself are not gonna be enjoying all yeah. you know the money that you're making trying to work 10, 12 hours a day, being an entrepreneur or having a full-time job, side hustle, this and that. So it, it's just it makes sense to put the health or, or you know, your health and your family's health as a, as a priority. That way, number one, you cut down on all those medical bills, medications, you know, your family members being in a bad mood. Right. <laughs> and right. overall, you know, absolutely. And quality of life, like you said, you know, life. you can have all the money in the world. I've taken care of princes from Saudi Arabia. I've taken care of professional athletes. Yes. I've, taken care of, I've taken care of people with, wow. you can't even fathom how much money they have, but they would trade it all. They would trade it all. They would trade it all for their health. Yeah, to be able to get up, walk, money. breathe effortlessly, walk effortlessly, be with their family the way they want to be with their family. And um, there's no greater wealth than our health. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. You don't have anything. I mean, mm -hmm. I know, I don't, I think it's Jay Shetty or one of, you know, the well known influencers have said, mm -hmm. 
you know, you can keep working now and make all the, the, the money so you can pay for your health care later on. It's so true. Do you want to do that or do you want to enjoy whatever you have right. and live a happier life? Yeah. So, you know, do something about it and, 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 you know, enjoy your life while you're here because we're not guaranteed uh, mm -hmm. you know, how long we're going to live. So just working and hustling just to make the money and not take care of your body, it just defeats the purpose. So it does. It does. And there's no the better thing. investment. There's no better investment than investing exactly. in your health. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. It's been really incredible, really having this eye opening conversation with you. I know you and I have spoken, you know, one on one, but I wanted everybody in my community to hear that um, just to have a little bit of the knowledge and then they can take that and do whatever they want to do, make yeah. the decision for themselves. But knowledge is really power and just yeah. empowering people with that knowledge is just it means a lot to me. So I really appreciate that. So what is next? What what are you up to next? And then how can people get hold of you? Yeah, that, you know, I have so many things in the works. I won't I won't spill the beans, spill all the beans. But um, I do. Um, I'll have a workshop coming up in where are we? September. It's called Feel Better Faster Workshop. It's designed to help um, naturally increase your energy, naturally in, uh, decrease your uh, stress and naturally release excess pounds. And so I know you attended that uh, workshop that I had. Yes. It was a master class, in fact. And so that'll be coming up. But where can people find me and stay in the know and, you know, so they don't miss a thing? Um, I'm Sharice Williams on Facebook. I have a wonderful group. It's called um, Holistic Health and Empowerment Community here on Facebook. And so if that is your thing, you know, if, if, if um, I hate to say alternative, it's actually becoming more mainstream now, stream now. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're looking for ways to help elevate your health naturally, that is what the community is all about. Holistic health and empowerment community. It's an awesome community. Um, in that community, you get lots of tips. You, it's a community of, you know, women with the same situation, you know, talking about their story and just hearing that gives you hope that there is a solution for your issues as well. So it's been incredible having you, Therese. Um, always, yeah. always love, you know, talking to you and having, you know, the connection that we always have. So thank you so much. Thank and you. Just so much. send us a link for your workshop registration. We'll share it here in the group okay. um, so people can register for it. Um, anything um, you would like to mention before you go? Um, no, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to be able to pour into and, and, and spread the word. You know, it's all about, like you said, empowering people with knowledge so that we can make educated decisions and not just do what we've always done, because that's what we've always done. Right. We yeah. can we can make different decisions when we are empowered with the information to do so. And uh, the last thing I'll leave with is we I think it's important that we stop making the arrogant assumption mm -hmm. that we have time. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Guaranteed. Yeah. And so now is the time. Now is the time to do something different. To yeah. do something different. So I agree. With all. I agree with you. Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're very Let's welcome. Sit, sit the stay put backstage. Let me uh, close out our session and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Well, you have heard it. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this was a great session. I mean, not just on, you know, for me alone. I know you guys are going to appreciate it, especially for anyone who has any type of ailment. Take the step. You know, attend her workshop, listen to what she says, even, you know, attending the workshop and the, the tips that I got from that, I took action from it right away and I was able to see a difference. That's why it was a no brainer for me to start working with Cherise. So I encourage you to join her group, um, check it out, attend her workshop and and then live happy. Then, you know, put yourself as a priority. We work so hard and I think we deserve that. So I thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you next Monday for another guest expert interview. Have an awesome day.